Welcome. Countrywise Kitchen has come to London's Borough Market to launch a year of feasting. New Year is just around the corner. Before we know where we are, it'll be the Queen's Jubilee and then the Olympics. And it is never too early to start thinking about the food. So let's make it good country food, the best that Britain can provide. I'm cooking up a festive feast using the finest ingredients from one of Britain's greatest country estates. And as we gather the ingredients fit for a New Year's banquet, we meet some of the country's most passionate producers doing what they do best. Borough Market in London was one of the very first farmers markets and it set the standard for the rest and now of course there are farmers markets all over the country just as good as this and it's great because you can do your shopping and meet the food producer. Fantastic. You can also shop of course from farms across the farm gate and these days even directly from some of the great estates of Britain. On the edge of Sherwood Forest lies historic Welbeck Abbey, ancestral home of the Dukes of Portland, and still a private family residence today. Around it, 15,000 acres of estate land, including farms, artisan food producers, a cookery school, and a deer park. At the entrance is a classic example of a proper English farm shop, a borough market in miniature one of the many, many places across the country where you can buy direct from farm or estate. I've come here in search of the best seasonal produce and then I'm going to find a beautiful spot to cook up my outdoor feast. I think people are really interested where food comes from and local is the big thing for us, but to be honest, it, it has to be good local. There's no point banging on about local if it's not a good product. I so couldn't agree more. We, we're very keen on, on getting very good products in, into the shop which are local. This is important in this part of the world, isn't it? Cheese. It is, yes. Yes, it's, it's very important. It's Stilton cheese in particular. You know, we went into producing um, an organic um, Stilton type cheese, which we can't call um, Stilton because um, it's made with unpasteurised milk. Yep. We have um, a single herd of dairy cows, which are organic, yep. and so we've got full traceability. We're the only um, Stilton type producer that only uses the milk from one herd. It's retail through here and also through Borough Market, so um, it's been a great success story. My eye's always drawn to the meat. You've got okay. lamb, yep. beef, and venison here. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably suggest it's, you know, the right time of year for venison. Well, I'm always <laughs> happy to cook venison. It's one of my <laughs> absolute favorite things in the world. So, gentlemen, can I ask, what have you got? Venison loins. You got some French trim venison loins. Yeah. Could you cut it into chops for me, into individual chops? Yeah, no problem. And a rack of venison, really good thing to cook, really easy to cook. I mean, it's no harder than a rack of lamb, especially if you cut it down into chops, then it's a doddle. You've got a wood-fired oven here, is that right? Yes, um, we've got a bakery on site, um, down in, in the old buildings, and... Uh... Look at that! Now, <laughs> when, you, when you hear about a ciabatta, and we get those things plastic wrapped, you know, all white, now that is what an Italian mm. housewife in a small village in Italy would recognise as ciabatta. Look at it. Yeah. You can see where it's been stone-baked, straight on the floor of the oven. Yeah. We've got the big round sourdough over there, and the smell's fantastic. The most delicious of all the breads. Yes, I'm getting hungry already. Me too. <laughs> Time to sort out a bit of veg for my outdoor feast. A couple of those. Uh -huh. Smoked garlic. Yeah. Mushrooms, really, is what I'm thinking of. And sometimes it pays not to just go for the obvious. Now, Christmas time, everybody thinks of these, Brussels sprouts. And these are beautiful, lovely and squeaky. Yeah, yeah. I like what's on the top of them. Sprout tops, absolutely wonderful. Next to the estate's picturesque village, home to many of the people who work here. I need a couple more ingredients to make this meal really special. And I'll find them at Welbeck's own microbrewery, where the head brewer is just 25 years old. How on earth did you get into brewing? I did microbiology and biochemistry at uni because I was interested and didn't really know what I wanted to do. 
So I was chatting to a lecturer after first year when I was having my standard first year wobble of I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to do with my life and he suggested <laughs> real ale breweries as a career. And I thought he was joking and I actually looked at it and it's a really sensible suggestion. So it's all based on microbiology and biochemistry. Right, what are you brewing this morning? I'm brewing uh, one of my regular beers called Ernest George. Okay. 4.2% ruby ale. Dark sort of colour, yeah, nutty. Yeah, quite dark. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. If you hold up to the light, it's a really lovely red colour. First I'm going to put a bit of hot water on the bottom and then I'm going to mix together all of the malted barley with hot water and it's going to mix into like a really lovely porridge, it smells fab and that'll sit for an hour and I'll have a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's not really that bad a life is it? Well, well you know. <laughs> porridge followed by coffee. Yeah. So what's yeah. in the malted barley? Just it's just, I don't add any sugar or anything to my mm -hmm. beer. It's all um, purely from the barley. And you can get various different types of malted barley of different colours and flavours. And the combination of those are what give you different colour beers. Right, OK. Yeah, because yeah. we use crystal malted barley for yeah, our... Yeah, um... there's a bag of crystal malt in there. OK, we use that <laughs> for making bread. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Today, I'm going to grab a handful of that barley to go with my venison, along with a bottle of Claire's finest ale. Where are we in relation to where these deer um, are kept? This deer is probably a mile that way, that's all. Is it? So we're talking food feet, not food miles. We like that, that's a good line. Okay, first of all, from the brewery, we've got crystal malt and chocolate malt, the malted barley, lots okay. of sweetness in it. Ah, lovely. Sprinkle a bit of salt and yeah. then follow it with the grains. Okay. You can be really quite generous, so half okay. of it sort of okay. thing. That's it. And then I want you to get your hands in it, pat okay. it in and then do the other side. Okay. Beautiful. So. Big old lump of butter, let it get to foaming stage like that. I need quite a lot of butter. Oh, that looks good. It does, doesn't it? it? Smells good. In with the venison. About a minute and a half on each okay. side. Yeah. You've got to move, but it's going to take three or four minutes resting. Okay. So, into this one now. Mm -hmm. Sprout top, okay? And I'm going to pop that straight in there. See, so don't chop or anything, just straight in. That's butter and water, and we're going to let it steam. Would yeah. you chop some mushrooms for yeah. me? Just slice them. Slice them. Okay. Nice thick slices. That's for the thickness? Yeah. Proper manly slices. Man right? slices. Man slices. That's it. And then also, since your skills are obviously very great, give me some slices of onion. Okay, no problem. Meanwhile, we're going to apply ourselves to the venison. It's looking good. If I press it, it's really soft and squidgy. It's not cooked, but it is beautifully brown. And let's just have a look at that. What do you think? It looks fantastic, doesn't it? And all the grains in there look delicious. Mm, so do, let's yeah. put some onion into the pan. And can you fish out the garlic for me? Yeah. So now, your smoked garlic. Ooh, just going to slice some of that into the pan as well. Lovely smoky flavour, man. Isn't, isn't it? it? Beautiful. In with the mushrooms, thank you. Mm -hmm. I put four slices in, that's two each. And I reckon that'll do us. Lovely. Quick look at this. Oh, look at that. That's oh, fantastic. <laughs> look at the colour. Look at the colour. Yeah. And it's steaming beautifully upside down. And the butter and the water and the vegetables it looks amazing. Really vivid. Fantastic. There we are. Done that before. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the beer that we saw being made this morning. And, ooh, good. I'm going to deglaze this. A little splush there of ale, more for the steam than for anything else. Lay my venison chops on top, plate over the top, and that venison's going to take like two minutes. And because mm -hmm. it's steaming, it won't take much resting time because okay. it's very, very juicy. And mm. venison has the issue sometimes because there's no fat in it, mm. it needs a bit of moisture, and that's what we're giving it with the beer. And it, it all works together, mm. I hope. Yeah. And in we go to our lovely Brussels top. Mm -hmm. There we go. Look at the colour. Mm, it's fantastic, isn't it? And it I'm just going to. really good, actually, to say it's just uh, Brussels stock. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. And there you have two beautiful portions to serve of vegetables. Absolutely smashing. Mm. Those venison chops have been there for a couple of minutes. Out come those. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you feel them, you feel how they're firm? Yes. So they'll be pink, yep. but they're fully cooked. Mm. So here you are, monsieur. So there yep. is your mushroom and white onion and smoked garlic, little sort of whatever. A nice Brussels top, nestled on the side of the plate, like so. And then to cap it all, there. 
is Great. the chop. It looks good enough to eat, doesn't I it? I hope so. Mm. Those flavours are fantastic, aren't they? It actually works. Mm. <laughs> and if you can see that the way this is cooked, because we put the plate on the top, it's actually pink and cooked and very juicy. Mm. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed my day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I love your farm shop. It's, Thank you. It's definitively how they ought to be. I love the beer. You've got my favourite meat in the world. Life doesn't get a lot better than this.